Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to New School. Educating you about what is going to happen both before and after surgery is a vital part of making your knee replacement journey a positive one. We try and get to you as early as we can to make sure you're as aware as possible, you know exactly what to do at this stage, because we find the fitter you are, the better you are with your exercises prior to having the replacement, yeah, the easier it will be. The team at the Basingstoke and North Hampshire Hospital will do their best to make sure that you understand exactly what is going to happen throughout the process and what you can do to make your operation and recovery as quick and successful as possible. On the front of the knee there itself. I'll pass it around. It's quite useful for everybody to have a look at them, even if you're having a full knee replacement, which I'll go on to show you in a minute. Before your operation, you will be given an appointment to attend knee school. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit sore there, OK? And that's obviously where you're probably most warm there. At knee school, you will be assessed by a physiotherapist or specialist nurse who will give you an exercise plan specially tailored to your needs. That's fine. OK, they let it come out straighter. So I'm just going to lift it into there very gently. That's fine, just bend it very fractionally, just let it relax a little bit more, okay? There we go. Bend it up again, just nice and gently. Okay, just let it relax. It's really important to exercise before your knee replacement because the stronger you are to start off with, the easier your recovery will be after the surgery. Also, the more familiar you are with the exercises, the easier it will be to do them at home. You may get some pain doing them before your surgery, so you may need to take some pain relief um, to do these exercises more easily. There's nothing to be gained by suffering pain and not being able to do your exercises because you haven't taken a medication. We'd encourage you to take regular medication which allows you to then do the exercises um, and have a better result in the long term. Walking is a great thing to do if they can do that. I often say to patients, go into a swimming pool and walk in the shallow end of the swimming pool. You're using the buoyancy of the water to take the weight out of your knee and you're walking against the resistance of the water, which will build up the muscles. And when the muscles get built up again, uh, the knee will feel more comfortable. People get into a vicious circle of pain, not walking, the muscles waste, the pain gets worse. Cycling is a, is a great thing to do um, if they can do that, but really anything that they can do within the tolerance of their pain, staying fit and active beforehand means that people bounce back quicker afterwards. All the exercises that you should try and do before your operation are covered in the exercise playlists in the knee section of this website. You can see that this bone, the femur, is no longer directly in line with the tibia. Um, At knee school, the physio or specialist nurse will talk you through the operation step by step and you will have the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. How long before one could drive? I usually walk three or four miles a day. How long is that going to take before I can build up to that again? You will be told about the different types of knee replacement, half knee or Oxford knee and total knee. Some patients might be eligible for what we call a unicondylar knee replacement, a half knee replacement. Usually that's replacing the inside of the knee joint and it means that just the inside of the knee joint is worn away. Most people in the world are very slightly bow-legged and arthritis tends to affect the inside of the knee more than the outside. If just the inside of your knee is affected and if everything else in the knee is, is fine, you may be eligible for a half knee replacement. The pro of the half knee replacement is it's a slightly smaller operation. You tend to recover from it slightly quicker. People are usually in hospital for a shorter period of time. And the range of movement that people get in their knee, the amount they can bend their knee, tends to be better. If, unfortunately, the arthritis affects uh, other parts of your knee other than just the inside, or if the big ligament in the middle of the knee, the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, has gone, we may say that, unfortunately, you can't have the half knee, and we do the full knee replacement. And the results are generally good. There are a number of types of knee replacement. The replacement that you will have will be explained to you by your consultant. You will be told what will happen before and on the day of your operation and what you'll need to do to prepare. You will be told about the anaesthetic options and you will be told what you will be able to do in the days and weeks following your operation. The most likely thing is that we won't get up and get out of bed until the following day. I'd say for 99% of people having a knee replacement, it is going to be the following day before we get up and out of bed, before the anaesthetic and everything is worn off. You will also be taught how to use crutches and how to climb stairs after your knee replacement. 
Knee school was fantastic because I'm a very, very nervous person. In the same room as me, and it was a bit jittery and don't know what's going to happen to them, but that sort of calmed the nerves down, you know. From the conversation and the instruction that we were given, it was absolutely fantastic. I felt so much more confident afterwards. They explained it so clearly, um, told you the options for the operation, which was even better. You will also be seen by the occupational therapy team, who will help you to make a complete plan for your return home from hospital, so that you can be sure that you have got everything organised for your care after the operation. Occupational therapists look at um, the home setup and uh, ensure that patients are going to be safe for when they go home after surgery. At Knee School we can determine how much help a patient will require from occupational therapy. Sometimes people have got very good support networks and they need very little help from us, but it's a good opportunity for us to identify what help people may need to make life easier at an early stage. Patients bring along a completed questionnaire which we go through with them. We identify any needs, any social support -ish issues or uh, any adaptive equipment that might be required for patients when they're home. There is a specific advice sheet um, in the patient information booklet for patients to view and we certainly encourage patients to look at this before they come in for their surgery so that they're well prepared. My toilets were very low so they raised that up and that was great because obviously bending your knee at first hurts <laughs> and uh, that made life a lot simpler. Before you are admitted there are a few things that you can do at home prior to your operation. Assess your home for ease of walking with crutches or a walking frame. Remove any loose rugs which could cause you to trip. Put objects you use regularly in easy reach of your chair so that you don't have to bend or stretch. Identify people to help you with shopping, washing and cleaning. Arrange transport to and from hospital. By the end of knee school, you will have been fully briefed on everything you need to know and do before your operation and you should have a good idea of what will happen to you before, during and after your knee replacement. While you are waiting for your new knee, there are a few things you can do that may help speed up your recovery. Exercise is very important because it will certainly make recovery following surgery uh, much easier. So it's very important that you keep your muscles in tone. We advise possibly low impact exercises such as cycling, um, gentle strengthening or possibly swimming. Anything that helps you build up your strength is generally beneficial to you. We want your general health to be as opt optimised as possible. If you're a smoker, stop smoking. If you are overweight, try and lose a bit of weight. And we understand that that's always very difficult because you're not going to be very mobile. Every kilogram of weight that we carry in our body will be going through our knees when we walk. So by reducing their weight as much as they can, that will relieve their pain to a certain extent before the operation and will have benefits after the operation. In other words, there'll be less pressure going through the knee replacement and that will hopefully make the knee replacement last longer. To deal with pain, there's a ladder that we sort of go through with patients. People would certainly be helped most of the time with a stick. And by having a walking stick in the opposite hand to the affected knee, you take just a little bit more of the pressure off the joint and that can relieve your pain. In addition to that, you can use obviously pain relieving medication. That comes in two forms essentially, one which we call analgesia, so painkillers like paracetamol and cocodamol, but also anti-inflammatories. So if you can tolerate those drugs, they also, you can use those as well. Taking painkillers before a knee replacement is what we expect. Um, and uh, that life is pretty miserable if you're in pain, so by all means take them. Specifically for uh, joint replacement, because of the uh, risks of infection, it's very important that you have very healthy teeth and gums. Make sure that you've been to the dentist recently and get your teeth checked out because any gum infections or tooth infections uh, can affect whether you have the operation. Don't have cuts, scrapes or bruises uh, or uh, damage to your legs prior to the operation because that will postpone you. So remember, before your operation, try to get yourself as fit as possible. Take regular exercise and look after your general health.
If you are experiencing pain, don't be afraid to take pain relief and use a stick to help you. Be aware of the problems that infection could cause. Teeth infection, open wounds such as grazes and scrapes, and urinary tract infections, to name just three. If you have any worries or questions, get in touch with the team. Our telephone number is in the back of your new booklet. Um, if we're not here, there is an answer phone, and we're quite happy to answer your questions at any time. We'd rather you asked us and were not worried about something than stop doing exercises uh, when we could help you.